You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. All right, so in today's episode, we wanted to provide you some tools for the holidays. Uh, you know, one of the things that makes it so difficult to maintain your fitness in the holidays is that things are busy. Uh, gyms are closed right now for a lot of people, or you just don't want to drive to the gym. Um, and so it's, a lot of people just don't work out. But what we said is, look, let's make some effective 10-minute workouts. Let's make some workouts that you only take 10 minutes that require no equipment that you could do anywhere that will actually get your body to maintain its fitness. And for some of you, improve your fitness. So that's exactly what we did. So in today's episode, we give you three 10-minute workouts. One is a HIT workout. That's high-intensity interval training, great for calorie burn. The next one is a mobility-based workout. This is great to improve the movement and mobility of your body. And then the third one is for skill. This is to get your whole body to communicate well, get you to practice a complicated skill, and just make you feel awesome. So three free workouts all last 10 minutes in today's episode. Now, this episode is sponsored by Four Sigmatic. This is one of our partners. We love them. They make some amazing supplements, all mushroom-based. Some of them are for performance. Some of them help you sleep better. Others are for general health. One of my favorite products from Four Sigmatic is their cordyceps. I love taking this before my long and grueling workouts. I notice more stamina, more energy. In men with low testosterone, cordyceps may actually raise your testosterone as well. But they have many, many other products. Go check them out. They're the best in the business with mushroom therapies. Go to foursigmatic.com. That's F O U R. S I G M A T I C dot com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mind pump for 15% off. Also, uh, if you want a full workout, if you want the real deal, we've put together three workout bundles for three different types of people. You probably fall into one of these categories. All three of these bundles give you nine months and more of expert exercise programming. That means all your workouts are planned out for you for nine months plus months. And that includes video demos. We tell you how many sets, how many reps, everything you need. Here's the three bundles. The first one is for beginners. It's called the new to weightlifting bundle. The second one is for intermediate lifters. Uh, this one's called the body transformation bundle. And the third one is for those of you that are fitness fanatics and that are advanced. This one's called the new year extreme intensity bundle. Great workouts, great for building muscle, speeding up the metabolism, burning body fat, and improving your fitness. By the way, all of them come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And right now, we're including one year of free access to our private Mind Pump forum. This is a great place for support. So you can go on there, ask questions. You can post videos of your lifts to get critique. There's also fun conversations. People share memes. And then, of course, your favorite fitness podcast hosts, myself, Adam, and Justin, are on there as well. You can find out more about all these workout bundles at mapsdecember.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, December.com. I want to put together um, like three very basic, simple 10 to 15 minute type workouts that people can do during the holidays with little to no equipment. That's mm -hmm. a great idea. And let's use... Uh, our YouTube channel, as far as a place, so obviously we're not writing a, a full. I'm glad I came up with this. Yeah, this was a brilliant idea of yours, Justin. Yeah. Um, but let's use our YouTube channel. Uh, let's pull from exercises that are there so people have a reference uh, that they can use and follow along yeah, with. Yeah, it's good because we, we, people are going to want to see the exercise to really do it properly. Yeah. Right. And and let's build some exercise or some workouts, plans that are short and simple that people can. Yeah do during these holidays here's you know and, and i'm glad you, you're you're doing this because the big challenge uh with the holidays obviously is, is time mm -hmm. family uh you, you maybe yeah, you're always in a rush you're, you're in a rush and so you're like okay i don't have an hour and a half to work out therefore forget it i'm not going to do it at all and you know there's this kind of um this this misconception around workouts that the value of the workout is based on the calories burned during the workout um now that's Sometimes that's part of the value, right? The fact that you're burning calories while you're working out. But that's not even close to the main value. The main value of a workout is the signal that it sends the body, the adaptation signal. And if you do a good workout, a good 10-minute or 15-minute workout, you can still send a good signal yeah. to the body um, uh, through doing it properly. But the programming is very important. The exercises, how they're done, 
and, and of course, uh, what goal it's targeting, what well, adaptation it's targeting. I want to explain why that matters so much, too, because it, it took me a long time. I was a trainer. Um, I've admitted that I didn't do this, right? I didn't, like... I didn't do these uh, these ten minute workouts, or sometimes go to the gym just squat or just deadlift. That mm -hmm. that wasn't until way later in my career, like thirty on. Yeah, before. it seemed like a waste of time. Exactly, that's how I felt. And one of the things that you and it's for the reasons that Sal just brought up. Like, right, you could think ten minutes, like ten minutes. I'm, you know, barely. What do I burn a hundred calories? Yeah, or waste something? of time. Yeah, waste of time. All I have to do is have two, you know, two Hershey kisses, and it's already, you know, canceled out that workout. Mm -hmm. But your your point or what I want to expand on the the sending sending the signal what what exactly does that mean and why is that so powerful and important and is had you not done that workout uh, the body is not requiring any additional calories it just needs its maintenance calories mm -hmm. but if you train and you send a signal to build muscle from your lift whether it be squatting or Turkish get ups or whatever exercise you decide to do. It's at least sending a signal to adapt, grow, and change, and that signal requires calories in order to support that signal. And so that's where this true value is. Forget the 100 calories that you burn from moving around. And there's some value to that. Don't get me wrong. Like getting your heart rate up for a little bit and then the time it comes down it, it, to get back to normal, like you're, you're going to burn some additional calories all day long, right? right. So there's studies that support just doing a 10-minute, a 15-minute intense workout like that you will you will burn more calories all day long, a little bit more than what you would, plus the calories you burn during the workout. But I think the most value is what you alluded to, which is you've now sent this signal that your body needs to build muscle. And so if I end up, because it's Christmas time, I end up eating a little bit more calories, at least I, I can feel good about some of those calories being partitioned over mm -hmm. to building muscle versus just being stored as right. fat. And that's right. just from a, a, a you know body fat percentage standpoint. You're still, uh, the other side right. is that Health you're improving your fitness. Right. Mm -hmm. You are improve if you do a and if first off being active for ten minutes is better for you than not being active for ten minutes, so that's a fact, right? So doing nothing versus doing something, doing something so long as you don't hurt yourself or do something that's totally inappropriate for your body or fitness level is better than doing nothing. So there's that, but then we can take it to a whole nother level, which is the right kind of exercise programming based off of my goal, uh, the right exercises, the rest periods, all that stuff. If I do it right, now I'm making that 10-minute workout or 15-minute workout actually valuable, actually truly valuable. You can actually get your body to change, or at the very least, here's the deal. If you're listening and you're consistent usually with your workouts and you work out traditionally, you know, you spend 45 minutes to an hour and a half doing a normal workout, and now you're super busy, at the very least, these 10 to 15-minute workouts will maintain yeah. your fitness. Because if you don't do it, because here's the deal, your body's always adapting. Yeah. Either it's adapting towards fitness or away from fitness. So if you do nothing, you're adapting in the opposite they're direction. They're still getting that stimulus, which is super valuable, because then they're going to be more responsive when you go back to your regular routine as well. So it's like, uh, you know, a lot of times after the holidays, if – if it's not a consideration even, or you just miss a couple of weeks, like, you know, that, that initial bit of getting that same kind of momentum and that came same kind of response from your body is pretty difficult. So this helps you kind of transition a lot smoother. I'm going to add to that too. Uh, and I don't know if there, and Sal, let me know if you know of this, like if there's any really good studies to support this, but this is just definitely something that I've pieced together over years of training myself and clients is even just doing that 10 minute workout how it changes your behaviors for the rest of the day oh, totally oh, yeah. i mean if i if i'm feeling lazy and tired and i'm like oh, i don't really feel like doing i don't have time to go do an hour workout i do it so f it i'm just going to sit around and watch tv then I, I feel lethargic. I don't move around. I'm slower to get up all day long. Just getting in and getting that 10, 15 minute lift, if I just go squat or Turkish get up or go do something or a little circuit, whatever, I notice that the rest of the day I'm more active. I'm I'm oh, more yeah. I'm more uh I'm more willing to help Katrina around the house. I tend to knock out some of the chores that I may have have to do. I don't find myself sitting and feeling so lazy. So there are there are lots of other benefits that are really tough for us to measure. You know, because I know we always do things in these controlled controlled studies. Does this build more muscle or burn more fat? Right. We're always talking about that. But the behavioral change mm -hmm. of just going and getting active, getting that blood pumping, getting that heart rate up, mm -hmm. getting a little bit of that sweat, 
and getting that activity in the day, how that starts to bleed into the rest of the day. Yeah, when you feel better, you, I mean, a lot of times you make better decisions. That's just how it goes. Like you're, you're active, you're energetic, uh, you know, yeah, you're, you're more willing to be up and be lively and make better decisions for yourself. Yeah. 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 Movement, even as little as 10 minutes of the right kind of movement increases the release of BDNF. Uh, this is a, it's like miracle grow for the brain. So it's good for the brain. It increases uh, the production of catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine. These are these energy chemicals that make you feel kind of energized. This is why if you feel tired and unmotivated, one of the best things you could do is get up and move. And then all of a sudden you notice a jolt of, uh, of natural energy. Increases uh, dopamine. So after doing, like Adam said, these 10 minute workouts, you might find yourself more motivated to do other things uh, around the house. And then behavioral-wise, uh, like what Justin's talking about, if you think about the times in your life when you've made the worst eating choices, and I don't necessarily even mean just the food you're choosing, but the way you're eating the food, when you overeat or when you eat because you're distracted or whatever, a lot of times it's associated with bad feelings. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I'm sad. I'm, you know, whatever. Now I'm going to eat more. Stressed out. Because I'm medicating with food. But if you already feel good, from good activity, you're in a different state of mind. And a good state of mind, here's the deal, and this is a fact now, a, a good state of mind, you're more likely in that state of mind to make better decisions for yourself. In a bad state of mind, you're more likely to make bad decisions for yourself. So this little bit of activity done, structured properly, um, will also likely, like what Adam was saying, lead to better decisions when you go to the when you have your Christmas dinner or now you're off work for a few days, you're less likely to snack or you're less likely to be lazy, it will probably encourage you to be even more active later on. I know when I do these types of 10-minute workouts, I find myself more likely to do a walk after a meal or mm -hmm. a walk before bed. And so I'm just – so it's like motion creates motion. I used to tell this to my oh, staff yeah. all the time. The more you move, the more you tend to want to move so long as it's done appropriately. So there's – there's lots of value in what we're about to talk about. It's not, uh, you know, oh, that's not a big deal because it's 10 minutes. No, no, no. If you do it right, it only takes 10 minutes. But if you do it right, you are going to see some some benefits. And it's tremendously better than doing nothing at all. Well, I, this was something that took a really long time for me to figure out. And what I like about it is, you know, we're, we're, no, we're no different than the average person. Like, uh we ebb and flow with our diet and workout consistency. It's not like it's, I mean, maybe Sal was like religious and never, ever misses a workout. But the rest of us, I feel like ebb and flow with, with our consistency and how dedicated and hard we're training. And one of the things that helps me not completely atrophy and feel like I go all the way back to square one is stuff like this, mm. is, is, is having that conversation in my head and going, yeah, I don't have the time or oh, all the excuses that fly around or I'm tired, I don't feel like it. Okay, bare minimum, I'm at least going to go do this. And at least going and doing those things makes a huge difference, especially if it's that or nothing. You know, right, So right. that or nothing is – now, ideally, of course, we talk about – lifting weights two to three times a week for a good solid hour and full body routine. Yeah, that's a perfect world. But the reality is we don't all live in that. And we have things that come up and we have vacations and we have this stuff. And we have family in town. Like, But, you know, it's not that hard to get away for 10 or 15 minutes to squeeze out a good Right. Workout. So we need to paint the context, right? So the context is I don't have a lot of time and I'm not going to be at a gym, right? So not a lot of time. So we want to do this in a 10 to 15 minute period. And uh, because I'm not going to the gym, because I, you're probably not going to drive to the gym for just a 10-minute workout, mm -hmm. then let's do this, like Adam said, without any exercise equipment. Also, we need to also look at what we can accomplish in 10 minutes. Like, So in other words, am I going to do a full-body strength-building routine in 10 minutes? Probably not. But there are other things I can do in 10 minutes uh, that are going to make a 10-minute workout valuable. And there's really three things – you know, that I can think of that you can uh, accomplish with a 10 minute workout. The first one would be, and this is an obvious one, is a high intensity interval type of workout. In fact, high intensity interval training workouts are supposed to last about 10 to 15 minutes. So yeah. that's supposed to be. Yeah. I mean, this is that. where they shine, right? And, and again, it's, 
it's great to to make sure like you have the prerequisites like where you you know you have the type of stability in the joints to really pull this off but also i mean you could scale this back so it's like really in a controlled uh type of movement but i mean that's really the only concern with these hit styled uh, uh workouts but they're really massively effective well right. this is also why we wrote multiple right so it's not just that so if hit isn't for you we'll get to the next one right, right. so so the three that we'll cover that i think you can do well in 10 minutes are your high intensity interval training great calorie burn it's intense you're going to burn more calories in 10 minutes than you will if you did other exercise or the workouts i should say then there's mobility mobility in a 10 minute period can be quite effective uh, you can really improve your mobility in a short period of time uh, done properly and that has its own value mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into who these are, are best for or whatever right. and then skill can you practice a full body skill in 10 minutes oh, I and, love this and accomplish great uh, adaptations in terms of the way your body's moving, the way your muscles are communicating, and as a result of that, uh, improving your strength. So those are the three areas that you can effectively train in a 10 to 15 minute period, and we'll put it together so that you require no equipment. And every exercise we go over today, you are going to find a, a link in our show notes. So that's mindpumppodcast.com. Uh, to a video where we're gonna we can teach you the exercise. So if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, if I say an exercise, you're like, I don't know what that looks like, or we just want to make sure that you're doing it right, you can go to mindpumppodcast.com, click on this episode, go to the the video, and watch the exercise. And and this this is something that we did to where you guys don't have to, uh, you know, you don't need any equipment. But that doesn't mean that if if you do have a barbell or a dumbbell, doesn't mean you can't interchange some of the things that we're talking about. We wanted to make it to where everybody can do these. But if you have access in your house or you have an at-home gym, you can interchange some of these exercises for barbell or dumbbell movements. Right, right. So the first uh, workout uh, that we put together is HIT. So I said that earlier. So high in HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. The goal with HIT is to maximize fat burn and to maintain muscle or maybe even build a little bit of strength. Mm -hmm. The problem with uh, intense cardio workouts tend to be that they burn calories, but they also tend to tell the body to pare muscle down. Mm -hmm. Hit done properly doesn't do that. You burn a lot of calories, but you don't get your body to lose muscle. And in some cases, you actually strengthen uh, or build a little bit of muscle. The first exercise um, is a very basic one. It's a great one. You're all probably familiar with it. And it's great for working all the pushing muscles of the upper body, but it's also indirectly a good core exercise, and that's a push-up. Uh, push-ups are excellent at working the upper body. They require core stability, and there's variations on how you can do a push-up. So those of you that find traditional push-ups on your feet challenging, um, you can do them off your knees. Mm -hmm. Those of you that are really strong and can do lots of push-ups, you can put your feet up on a chair, on a couch, do them elevated, and that'll increase the intensity uh, of that exercise. So the video that we're linking to this is uh, the push-up with hand release that I teach, and I also teach the variation on your knees here. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for the variations of these, that's in that in that video, and that's the, the first one. Now, the second one that we can do um, that I, I think is a really – I think it's a it's one of those underrated movements totally. that you don't see people doing often, but as trainers, we used a lot, and that's the prone cobra. And the prone cobra, beside the fact that we're, we're addressing the posterior chain, the backside, right, uh, is great for posture. And when we mm -hmm. talk, we talk a lot on the show about people having rounded shoulders and forward head. And so doing a movement and an exercise to address that. And when uh, what a great time to do this because sometimes doing movements like this, people when they're in their full hour workout, they want to do all the big compound lifts, understandably. And so this exercise sometimes gets neglected. Here's a great time to put it into your routine. You don't need any weights to do it. We have a video to show you how to go through that. Oh, I, I love Prone Cobra. You feel it uh, all the way up and down your the backside of your body. Um, there's a rotation involved with the arms. Mm -hmm. It's great for, like Adam said, for posture. This is one of those exercises that feels yeah. good. You and it, feel it all the way down your back, even to your lower back. even. Right, and it requires no equipment whatsoever. No. The third exercise is a phenomenal one for the lower body. Um, and there's variations of this, but the one that we chose, because we think most people, this may be the best variation of it, is a back step lunge. Uh, when you're standing with your feet together, you take a step back into the lunge and you step forward again. 
that forward step involves the glutes and the posterior chain a little bit more. Yeah, and what I like about this too, in terms of even if you're a beginner, a back step lunge, like what what I notice a lot of times too, sometimes that forward momentum will carry that knee a little bit too far and travel and put some pressure there in the knee that's unnecessary. And so, you know, stepping backwards, uh, you really feel the difference uh, and are in a better postural position and can activate, you know, glutes and posterior chain a little bit more. Right. Now, the fourth movement, a great core stability movement. This is great for the core. A lot of people do this wrong. I highly suggest you watch the video uh, that we've attached uh, to the show notes to this, and that's a plank. Most people do a plank and really work their hip flexors quite a bit. Mm. If you do a plank properly, you will hit your core uh, very effectively. So watch the video. There's more of a, of a, of a tailbone tuck in a proper plank than there is with the butt uh, sticking like, out. And the idea of this is we're, we're, you know, we're shooting for like 10 to 15 minutes, right? So there's kind of this gray area because we expect that different people will have to rest a little bit longer between each round. So we just went through all the exercises. If we were to actually program sets, reps, rest periods, things yeah. like that, it would look like this. So you would do 10... 10 of the push-ups, you do 10 of the prone cobras. When you do the prone cobras, what the reps look like is you pull back, you squeeze, and you hold for like five seconds, yeah. right? And then hold you go back. Hold at the top. Yeah. That's right. You hold at the top, you squeeze the, the upper back, the thumbs are up in the air, the video will demonstrate it, but you hold that for five seconds, you do 10 reps, and then we go into the back step lunge. The back step lunge, we do 15 on each side. You're just alternating back and forth for you know 30 in a row, so 15 one side, 15 the other, alternating back and forth. And then the last one is the plank, and that would be a 30-second to one-minute hold depending on your experience level, yeah. right? If you're somebody who has got a very strong core, you can probably hold for a minute. If you're somebody this is you're new to this, then we would do 30 seconds. And then after that, this is where you rest. Mm -hmm. So you go through that. Let the so heart one perform them all consecutively, and we're eliminating uh, long rest periods in between each exercise. We're really just trying to kind of go right into transition smoothly right into the next exercise. That's right. One after another, and then once you get through a round, that's where you rest. So you should get your heart rate going pretty good from doing those four exercises back to back to back to back, and then you stop, then you rest. And and the recommendation, right? So there's a lot of stuff out there that tells you like the HIT protocol, but as a trainer, the way you would coach it was we would pay attention to their breathing patterns, right? Yep. So, and and their level and their fitness. form, yeah, and their form, right? So if your form is breaking down and you're huffing and puffing, you know, I'm going to give you a longer rest period. I want your heart rate to come almost all the way back to normal, resting almost, and then go back. So I want you to be able to completely gather yourself, and that may look like a one minute rest for some people it may look like a two to three minute rest for some people that's what you have to decide and then you go back into it and you do three rounds and you do oh yeah and you do three rounds so that could take you 10 minutes it could take you maybe 15 minutes um but now why rest right someone might be like well why don't i just keep going through the reason why you rest after the round is because if you're pushing so hard that you're breathing like crazy and your your form is gone and now your push-ups, your prone cobra, your lunges, your planks. Yeah, get sloppy. It doesn't matter that you're doing those exercises. You might as well just jump in place. That's right. Now it's just cardio. It's just cardio. So it's important to rest at the end, catch your breath, wait for your heart rate to come down, then do it again because you want your form to be good. If the form goes bad, then the programming or the exercises – don't even matter anymore. So and there's a lot. And there's a lot of ways too. I mean, we're we're giving uh, obviously a, a generic layout for most people, and for most people, this will be pretty challenging. But if you're really advanced, it doesn't mean you can't take the push-ups, the prone cobras, the lunges to higher reps, or holding on to weight, mm -hmm. or slowing down the tempo. There's lots of ways for you to increase the intensity if needed. Most people, this will be a great workout the way it is. But some of you, if you're listening, you're advanced and you still want to take advantage of this, then slow down the tempo or add weight or add reps to increase the intensity. Right. Now, the next workout is a mobility-based one. It's a mobility flow. Now, mobility, the goal with mobility, of course, you're moving, so you're still kind of burning some calories, but really the goal with mobility is to get your body to feel better, mm -hmm. to move better. If you're feeling kind of stiff, kind of tired a little bit, and you're like, I got to do some movement, you probably maybe not do HIT, right? You probably shouldn't do a high-intensity interval training workout, but a mobility workout would be phenomenal. You go through a mobility drill, and at the end of it, you're not going to be huffing and puffing and dying. You're just going to feel really good, 
really mobile, loose and connected is how you should feel after doing this. Yeah, and if you're doing it right, I mean, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be intense. Like uh, People don't realize that when you're actively squeezing and adding tension into the muscle and working through these positions, what kind of uh, you know a workout that really is. Like You're going to be sweating through this. If you've, if you've done what uh, any of our webinars before, like people are always surprised at how intense some of these uh, positions can be. Oh, right. yeah. You see me in the, the, you know, you're alluding to the webinar that I did with the 90 90 and all those moves. Like uh, by the second or third exercise, I'm sweating. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, you're the ideal of this is that you're, you're, intensifying the end ranges of motion on all these movements. Right, you're which connecting. Is the point. You're connecting, you're trying to tense up your body, but it's a different type of intensity than hit, right? Hit, you're moving and you're sweat. This is intensity that you control with your connection. And again, at the end of this, you're going to feel connected to your body and loose. And if you have any aches and pains and stiffness, you'll find that it'll disappear uh, after one of these 10-minute uh, mobility flows. So the first movement um, is one of my favorites. It's great for the rotation uh, aspect of the spine. There's some shoulder mobility in this. There's even a little bit of hip mobility involved uh, in this movement. And that's lizard with uh, rotation. And what you'll find, by the way, when you do these some of these movements is you'll find that you get better and better with them as you continue through the workout. So you start with lizard with rotation. From there, you move to 90-90. This is when you're on the floor. One leg is in front of you. One leg is in back. You're working on what's called internal and external rotation of the hips. In other words, for, for, for layman's terms, one leg is twisting one way. The other leg is twisting the other way. So you're working your hips through a nice range of motion. It also works on your posture because a proper 90-90, you're encouraged to sit up really, really tall. And then from there, you move to a movement called handcuffs with rotation, which is shoulders and upper back. This is phenomenal for upper back tightness, neck tightness, and shoulder tightness. Now, what the protocol looks like for this as far as reps and sets and how I lay this out is the lizard with rotation. We're going to rotate on one side 10 times. We're going to rotate on the other side 10 times. The 90-90, you're going to do five reps on each side. When you do your five reps, you lean into the stretch, mm -hmm. and then you intensify for five seconds. Similar to the movement we talked about earlier in the last circuit, where you get to that point, like in the prone cobra, and you hold and you intensify for five seconds. Same concept in the 90-90. So it's only five and five on each side, but the five you do, it's a five-second hold in that stretch position where you intensify. And I go through this in the video that's linked to this. So five and five on each side, and then the handcuff rotation, same thing, five times. So five full rotations equals one full round, and that's what one round looks like. And then you're going to repeat that. And really times. take your time uh, going through these videos and paying attention to the coaching cues. Like this workout uh, in, in itself is is uh, at the utmost important to listen to those cues because just like these little nuanced positions angle wise make a massive difference in terms of you know you maximizing the benefit of these stretches. Right now, when when we, when we say intensify, so and you and you watch the videos, you know it'll kind of make sense. But if you're listening, you're like, what do you mean by intensify? All right, do this right now. You're listening to the podcast. Reach your arm up above your head. Like, just stick your hand up above your head. Okay, so now you've got your arm up above your head. Now what I want you to do is press your arm up as high as you possibly can above your head. Keep reaching and keep reaching as, as tall as you possibly can. What you've done is you've intensified that position. You've connected to it. You're not just reaching, you know, we arm up. You're actually reaching and trying to stretch it and get it up as high as you possibly can. That's what we mean by intensify. So when you get in these positions, you don't just get in the position. You get in the position and you get into the position. You make it more intense. You connect. You tense up the muscles and you make the form even better through intrinsic connection, meaning you yourself are making the exercise more challenging. Now, the third workout is a skill-based one. Now, what does that mean, skill? Well, that means uh, we're trying to get your body just to connect, the whole body to connect. We're working all your muscles through full range of motion with exercises that uh, will target the entire body. Similar to mobility, but different because there's a strengthening component with the skill uh, yeah. workout. Well, I like this so much because I feel like this is overshadowed so much in people's programming because you don't really know where to put this all the time uh, in your workouts. And what a great opportunity to just spend time on seeing how well your body can communicate and how well your 
you can work on your coordination and, and moving uh, your body from your lower half to your upper half and having control and being able to brace. And this has massive carryover into your regular lifts. Now, we, we've choose, we chose some unconventional lifts for this, right, or movements for this. Uh, but this clo most closely resembles the way I train when I only have 10 or 15 minutes. Like so, You just go practice a movement. <clears throat> exactly. I pick a, a big movement you know, that I, that I can get better on. There's plenty of them. There's plenty of exercises that I, I don't have perfect form and that are big calorie burns, big muscle builders, that I can go there for 10, 15 minutes in the gym and I will just do that. But the ones we chose, we obviously chose for a reason and I think they address a lot of areas that people need to work on and they don't require any weight, right? But this again, doesn't mean that you can't replace this with squatting or deadlifting if you have access to that. This is where I like to just come in the gym 15 minutes and all I'm doing is practicing my squat form or deadlift form. Uh, but these are uh, skill exercises that I think uh, a lot of people should be doing more of. And the, the first one that I love to have clients to do when we're doing something like this is the Turkish get-up. I just think that... Oh, getting uh, up off the floor, yeah. moving up all the way through, through the entire movement. There's no weight on this. What you're going to be doing is holding your palm up as if you're holding a, a pizza. And the goal is to not drop the pizza. And you go through the entire Turkish get-up from floor to standing you are working uh, your entire body. And I'm going to add one more thing to the skill uh, skill workout. If I'm being honest, the one workout out of these three that most people should probably choose most often is the skill one. I'm, I'm not lying. Second would be mobility. Now, I know most people are going to pick hit yeah. because they want to do I the know, calorie burn. Right. But to be honest with you, if you do this workout uh, you know, 10 minutes every single day uh, over the holidays – the one you should probably spend the most time in would be the skill one. Um, and Turkish getup is just, it does everything. It really does do everything. Yeah, it nails uh, like so many different parts uh, of, of movement. And I think that movement in itself, uh, you want to be able to see what, you know, your training has been providing you in terms of strength, but also, you know, how do you utilize that strength? And so this is a way to then uh, connect uh, a lot of uh, parts together. So it's not just uh, segmented out all the time and you're isolating specific muscles. And each one of these movements have a rotational component to it and so the emphasis is put on form and technique you don't need any weight for it but because the idea is to make the exercise look perfect thank you thank you is take your time on the movement yes. and really break it down go slow controlled and every time you return to it try and improve upon the way you move don't think of it as like oh i'm not carrying any weight i can do this this is easy i should have more weight Look at it as like the whole purpose of us doing this is improving the movement. When I come in and I do this on a, a day when it's squatting or deadlifting and it's just a skilled, what we call a skill day, I'm not loading the bar with nowhere near my max load. In fact, it's probably less than 50% the load because the idea is that it's all about the practice, the skill, the movement. Mm -hmm. I know if I load the bar, I'm more likely to break down as I fatigue. The same thing goes for these exercises. These are very technical movements, very nuanced. And so really take your time and perfect the movement. Don't worry about it not being loaded. Yes, you can load it if you're advanced, but the, the idea of skill days is to really practice how it looks. Right. The next movement uh, is the windmill. This is uh, great for your back, for your hips, mm -hmm. for your shoulders. Um, in fact, if you are sitting down a lot um, and you start to find that you get a little tight, mm -hmm. um, the windmill is like one of the best remedies for that. I mean, you get up and you do some windmills um, and you totally alleviate all the tightness you get from well, sitting Well, and up. also like a, a common injury uh, that I see all the time is to the QL. And uh, that, that happens as a result of shifting one side or the other with load. Uh, and, you know, you can prevent a lot of these types of injuries by really reinforcing that thoracic rotation and being able to have strength and be able to navigate through that. And what a great exercise to really address that. A lot of people don't realize how little rotation they can actually do, uh, you know, with their thoracic spine. Oh, totally. Now the QL muscle is quadratus lumborum. This is a muscle in the lower back towards the side. If you ever get tightness in your lower back and it feels like it's kind of on one side. So it's like my low back is tight and it's tight maybe on the right side a little bit. That might be the QL. So the windmill tends to solve that tightness issue for a lot of people. Now, the third skill movement um, is a, a, a killer core exercise, um, but it's great for working the entire body, and it's a bear crawl. Again, you can watch the video of how to do this properly, but when you're doing a bear crawl properly, the idea is to maintain 
neutral spine, keep your body from twisting too much, and you're moving forward, keeping your body totally connected. And again, because this is a skill workout, your goal is to go through each of these and just get perfect form, just yeah, to make it I don't perfect. know about you guys, but uh, a lot of my clients have never been just in beast position. So you start in beast position where uh, basically you're on your hands and your, your, your the toes. balls of your feet, yeah, and, and, and your knees are bent, but just holding that, sustaining that position is really difficult. And, and to start there and now be able to progressively walk and get that cross-sectional firing, it's, it, it prevents or it promotes a lot of great movement. Are those original videos still in the prime with uh, Dr. Brink when we did that? Mm, are they still? Question. Yeah. They are. Mm. Yeah, that's still in there, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember the first time that he did that to me and just broke me down completely. Oh, totally. Yeah. Just sitting in that position. Now with the skill workout, it's a little bit less prescriptive. The idea is to do perfect form and practice the technique. And so I'll say, if you do all three of these movements in your skill workout, you could spend two minutes to three minutes on each exercise, then move to the next one, perfect that one, and so on. If one of them feels better to you than the others, you can spend more time oh, in that particular one moment. of those could end up being the entire workout. Right, right, right. You could spend you could easily spend 10, 15 minutes just doing Turkish get up. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, three or four rounds of some Turkish get up, slow, controlled, easily will take up that time. So feel free to pick one of these, especially if you're not good at it and you're trying to practice it. That's what I would do. Great advice. Okay, so there you have it. You have your hit workout your mobility workout, and your skill workout. Each one of them will take you 10 to 15 minutes. If you want to see the exercise demos, all of them have videos. Go to mindpumppodcast.com, look at the show notes, and we've linked up the YouTube videos with uh, demonstrations of the exercise and explanations so you can all do them properly. They require no equipment. They're very, very short. Do these, maintain your fitness throughout the entire holiday. Uh, look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube if you want. Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. Um, Instagram is the preferred place. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug the producer at Mind Pump Doug. Um, I think a lot of people get confused about rest periods, and they don't realize just how important yeah. it is, it, rest periods are to the effectiveness uh, of in a workout. Term, in terms of like the adaptation process well, in it's general. An, it's too. another progressive overload tool, and we know that that's one of the best ways to guarantee that you keep seeing progress. Yeah. It is.